To assist the excavator, the pipeline representative will use the line finding equipment and probe bars to confirm the exact location and depth of the pipeline prior to and during excavation. You need somebody to show you how to work that thing? What are you doing here? This hole is a lot bigger than the other one. It is. Yeah, here we've got a, a small water line that's crossing below our pipeline. We actually used two observers to help Jimmy to, uh, to locate where the pipe was. Once we exposed it, uh, they helped to keep him off of the pipe. So they're watching the as the bucket's moving around? That's correct. You know, anytime there's an excavation occurring within 50 feet of a marathon pipeline, a marathon representative must be there to cover that dig. There are a number of things that we have to watch out for, uh, not only to keep the excavator away from the, the pipeline and comply with the state law for a tolerance zone, but also to work with the observers. The observer that works with the backhoe operator, their purpose is literally to do the hand digging as necessary uh -huh. to expose the pipe and then working with them to make certain that we get the excavation completed safely. We typically maintain a 24 inch uh, clearance all the way around the pipe, above, below, and either side. That keeps the power equipment away from the pipe. That's primarily what's going to damage well, yeah. the facility. Well, my next question is, what's the pipe made of? The pipe's made of carbon steel. So if you ding it, is there any forgiveness? Any kind of scarring, uh, gouging, or denting, uh, over time, oh, sure. flexing yeah. and working of that metal, it fatigues and can fail. If an excavator causes what seems to be only minor damage to a pipeline or other underground facility, he should stop work immediately and contact the utility operator. Even a minor scrape or dent to a pipeline or the protective coating on the pipe may cause corrosion to begin and lead to a future leak. The utility company will inspect the damage and make any needed repairs before you continue excavating. What happens if it starts leaking? If it starts leaking, you need to call 911, and I need to call our operations center to shut down this high pressure pipeline immediately. If damage to an energy pipeline results in a release of any gas or liquid, federal law requires the excavator to immediately call 911 and the utility operator. Excavators are encouraged to cooperate with local emergency responders and other utility companies that could be affected during the emergency situation. In many states, excavation to make emergency repairs or Restore service may begin immediately, but excavators should call 811 and the utility operator prior to excavation or as soon as practical. So what are they doing with the, the railroad ties? Do they look like railroad ties. Yeah, they're skids, we call them, John. Oh, okay. Uh, anytime that we expose a, a span of pipe more than 10 feet, we need to support that span so that the stress load of the pipe is not just hanging on the pipe itself. So they're structuring that such that it'll support the pipe in a way that won't let it sag. We'll take the cribbing out after we've put sandbags or other support methods that's oh, acceptable to Marathon in place, and we'll pull those out, and then we can uh, start the backfill process. It's interesting, too, that you might note the, uh, the foreign pipeline below us there is crossing us at a perpendicular angle. Uh -huh. that's, a, that's a necessary piece of this. If it goes at a long angle, it becomes more of a possibility for damage to occur while excavating. So it needs to cross at a right angle to our pipeline, and it needs to have 24 inches of clearance between the top of that foreign pipe and the bottom of ours. That, that needs to be maintained. And during the backfill piece, we will put some tape in there, some caution tape. When caution tape is used, it's placed underground just above the buried utility. The tape alerts excavators that they're digging right on top of a utility. So when, when you're refilling the hole, will somebody be down there with shovels doing the delicate work? Or are you, you're just dropping all the dirt right on top of everything? No, we're going to dip it in a bucket at a time and, and bring the sides up, uh, bring it up compacting it, continue to get dirt underneath the, uh, the pipe and to, to bring the compaction to about what it is or was before we did the excavation. Mm -hmm. That'll bring the support level of the pipe where it needs to be. Then once we get about 18 inches of cover on the pipe itself, then we can push the rest of it in and do the final cleanup right. of the site. Well, John, we've come a long way in this project here. We're down to the point where we're backfilling, and uh, we've used what we would call select backfill. Select meaning that it doesn't have any sharp rocks, 
There's no large clods that would over time compromise the coating of the pipeline. The best. The best stuff we have. And uh, at this point, really, uh, if you would like to spend some time on the backhoe and put some dirt backfill in here, we would love to have I, you give it a shot. I'd enjoy that. Awesome. Well, have uh, at it. Good uh, luck. All right, Keith. Let's Thank go get you. it. All right. You've been looking forward to this all day. I sure have. Right. Start with your right, now follow through with your left. Oh boy, okay. There you go, there you go, that's right there, that's all I wanted to do. I think, I think everyone else is going home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey ho, hey ho, hey ho, hey ho. Oh, let's see, throttles here, buckets. So, <laughs> to work we go. Let's see that kick that up. Ah, now that was fun. But I think I should probably leave it to the professionals. Hey, speak of the devil. Bo, what's next? Good morning, Keith. Oh, hi, John. Good morning. Good morning, Bo. <laughs> so you got a, a hole and you got some machines. I'm figuring that uh, one has something to do with the other. Well, John, this is really a good one to see because directional drilling comes with its own specs for safe digging. That's right. Any company that wants to do something other than a conventional excavation has to seek permission from Marathon Pipeline to do that. They have to present a plan to us. As the responsible person on site for Marathon, I have to make sure that the utility crosses us at a 90 degree angle or as close to that as possible and also maintains the correct depth which would be four feet below our pipeline and that depth needs to be maintained from the time they enter our right of way on one side of the pipe until they exit the right of way on the other side. This fellow over here has a line finder depth finder that's going to be able to verify where the head is and what its depth is. I think I saw Wiley Coyote use a machine like that once. <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't to bore a hole through a cliff that he fell through later. <laughs> For a boring or directional drilling project, the pipeline crossing area must be exposed to visually confirm that the newly installed utility is at least four feet below the pipeline. Hey, Tom. Yeah, Bill. You want to give John a ride on this thing? Oh, absolutely. Here, I'll show John. Ready to go now. As a reminder, utility operators should be notified if the actual placement of the new facility differs from the planned placement. Good job. Well, that was fun. Thanks, everybody, for allowing me to play with your toys. And I realize they're not toys because this is a dangerous job. And so many different ways to dig a hole, I had no idea. And I've learned that there's only one way to dig safely, and that's by calling 811 before any excavation job. Oh, you guys all have family, I'm sure, and I, I bet you they're very thankful that you're walking in the door every day safe and sound. And there's so many, so many reasons to take those extra steps for safety. And thanks for all you do. And, uh, oh, thanks for the John, for the exciting time out here. Thanks for all your help. Like so many jobs in America, this one comes with an extra set of responsibilities that can affect us all. An accident can mean personal injury to a crew member, tragedy for a family, loss of important services to a community, environmental impact from a pipeline release, massive fines for a violator, and all kinds of other nasty stuff. Following the excavation best practices helps to protect you, your co-workers, and our vital underground infrastructure. Calling 811 is the easy part. Using a backhoe, that might take a little more practice. For more information on excavation best practices, please visit MarathonPipeline.com. What's that? <laughs>
We're gonna dial 811 to let everybody know that we have a planned excavation here. 811, I've never heard that before. What do you think of this line here, Bo? Could have done that any better myself, John. Oh, you're just saying that. Well, maybe. Okay. <laughs> Dave, Steve, and Keith, this is John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you were at the rumble lesson the other night. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Well, I think I'll go downtown and see the world's largest wind chimes. I think I saw Wiley Coyote use a machine like that once. <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't to bore a hole through a cliff that he fell through later. <laughs> Speaking of cliff. <laughs> <laughs> well, this sounds like the single most important step in all excavation. Well, it is. I'm glad you brought that up. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah, so I bring things up occasionally. I'll give you back to the boss. His name is Bo, Megan. Are you single? She wants to know if you're single. <laughs> no. Like taking candy from a baby, that is. I've never done that, though. No. No. Thanks for keeping our uh, civilization working. Because this is a dangerous job. I don't have to tell you that. I'm not even sure why I'm telling you that. I forget, what am I saying? <laughs> and don't you think you should make a singing group out of these guys? Ranger and the Shovels? I think that would be perfect. Okay. <laughs> That's it. Forever known. You'll be forever known. Thank. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. You, goodbye now. You have a good day. Yeah. I. Well, no. Well, it's clear here. Yeah. Well, there's well, it's snow in there. Well. Uh, no, I didn't know that. I didn't. I didn't know you drove four-wheel drive. Uh, that's. I gotta go. I. Uh, what? Um, and I'm an Aries. <laughs> well, thank, thank you, thank you very much. Bye, bye now. <laughs>